So you want to learn how to work on old cars. Well, let's see if I can point you in the right direction, give you some helpful information uh, on how I learned to work on cars and uh, things that I do to help me drive these things. Uh, this one we've got in daily driver status, so we can drive it anywhere and everywhere we want to right now. We've got the air conditioner working, everything working on it. And it started out as a car that had been sitting in a cow pasture for 30 years. So uh, kind of what we did to get that going and hopefully get you pointed in the right direction if you'd like to do something like this. First thing is select what style of vehicle you want, what type you want. Uh, American muscle car is kind of what I'm all about. I've drove JDM cars and tuner cars, different things like that, but uh, American muscle, that's where my heart's at. Some people say this isn't a muscle car because it's a four-door, but it's the same car as a Dodge Charger on the inside. It's got the same heart. So, first thing I would do is find a good car. Find one that's not rusted to pieces, that's not falling completely apart. Uh, you can find one that's taken apart all in somebody's garage and try to reassemble it. That can be a little bit more uh, than you really want to get into if it's your first time learning how to work on a car. You want to try to find a complete car to work on. And when I say complete, I say interior is all there. All the wheels are mounted to it. Uh, transmission and engines all there. Uh, that's kind of what you'd like to do. I know you can get into it without motors and transmissions. I bought cars without motors and transmissions, but this video is kind of geared towards those guys that's just getting into it and just starting to uh, figure out how to work on stuff. So the first thing I do is make sure I get a complete car. It doesn't have to be running. And that's how you learn. You just do it. You figure out why it's not running. This car was missing the gas tank, the fuel pump, and uh, radiator. And that's the three things I had to put on it to get it running. Other than that, I haven't really done anything that was necessary. Put wheels and tires on it. There's been other things I've had to do to it. But other than that, not a lot I've had to do to it. Um, the other thing is, where do you get information on cars to fix like this, uh, to fix old cars like this? I would say, buy you a repair manual. Uh, try to find the repair manual. A lot of them are still being printed today. They're still in print for a lot of cars. Give you a lot of good information. I've got a 1972 Dodge repair manual. Covers these and chargers and all of that. And there's a lot of good information in those, wiring diagrams, vacuum line diagrams, things like that. Uh, you're also, you've also got YouTube and the internet and you have to learn how to filter that out because there's a lot of good information, a lot of bad information. The thing about the internet is any old idiot like me can get on there and make, and make videos, whether it's right or wrong or true or false. And uh, you kind of have to learn how to filter some of that out. But it's been a good way to learn. Uh, when I was a kid, I got my first truck when I was 12, I learned how to work on it from getting tools and wrenching on it and playing with it, and I had a grandpa and a dad that would help me and show me how, but I didn't have the internet, didn't show me any information on there, so we got it from books, and magazines, uh, people working at the car parts store, and friends, and learning the hard way, and you've got a lot of information, you've got a good advantage nowadays, because you can look up anything you want, anything you need on the internet, and it's right there, ready for you. And, uh, and there's a lot of help there. Uh, the other thing is, uh, don't go into it too deep. You know, I see a lot of guys that buy a car and immediately get it home, rip it all apart, take the bumpers off, take the hood off, take the engine out. They're gonna rebuild the engine, they're gonna do all this, and they uh, get it all tore apart, and then it sits there for 20, 30 years never done anything with it and so don't do that unless you're really going to be dedicated to getting it done uh, the best thing to do is leave it together and get it running get it dependable get it driving uh, you don't have to hot rod it you don't have to add a lot of extra to it don't need a good fancy paint job on it right away just do it as time allows but get it running and driving and decide if you like it or not decide if that's the car you really want to put the time and effort into restoring and uh, get it running that's bare minimum get it running and driving do your best to do that just dig into it uh, if you're looking for tools you can find a good deal on tools 
uh, Harbor Freight, your friend, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of these places carry tools. Uh, the main thing you're going to need is some kind of 3 8 ratchet driver set uh, and maybe an adjustable wrench and you can do 99% of the service on these cars with uh, 3 8 ratchet set and adjustable wrenches and a lot of specialty tools you can borrow for free from AutoZone and O'Reilly's and places like that. They have loaner tool programs that will help you out a lot. So if you're missing something they can help you out. Find some way of checking voltage, get an ohms meter, volt meter, uh, learn how to use that. I'll make a video on that sometime showing you how to check electrical parts and check electrical components and circuits and things like that. It's not as hard as some people would make it out to be. Um, if you're looking for a really good deal on a toolkit that I use a lot, Sam's Club keeps one. It's Crescent brand. It's got a lot of ratcheting wrenches in it, and uh, it's about a hundred bucks, and it's a good kit. Uh, the only thing I would say when you get it, take the screws out of the ratchets, put Loctite on those screws and screw them in, because those screws fall out, and then your ratchets fall apart. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Uh, I've had three of those kits, and all of them did the same thing. Uh, and it's not because uh, they break or wear out, it's because I've got them in three different vehicles and I actually have lost a bunch of the sockets and stuff in my first one because I used it so long and some of the, some of the sockets have stripped out and things but uh, those are a good kit if you have a Sam's Club membership I would check that out uh, what else let's see I made some more notes I think that's about it oh community uh, find a good community to be part of car shows are your friend uh, swap meets are your friend you'll find a lot of guys that have worked on the same vehicles that you have and they know a lot about it they have a lot of extra parts laying around uh, they've run into different problems that you're likely to run into and they'll help you out uh, there's a lot of parts on this that I've got at swap meets that I've just picked up over the years um, so hopefully this gets you pointed in the right direction this video is about over I don't have a whole lot more to say and uh, I'm over here sweating like crazy. I didn't bring any water with me, so I'm halfway <laughs> dehydrated. Uh, it's about well, a bajillion degrees out here today, and the cicadas are making a lot of racket, and the birds are chirping and flying around. And uh, anyways, if you like old cars and you want to get interested and you want to get to working on one, my best advice is just do it. Don't overthink it. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. You don't have to jump in and uh, and go to some college class or join some uh, group of, uh, of, you know, investors or something like that to learn how to work on cars. Just learn how to work on them. Just start working on it. Whatever it is, uh, I like rear wheel drive vehicles. I would say that's a good starting point. Uh, makes it easier they're usually easier to mess with than front wheel drive vehicles uh, and they're funner to drive they're funner to work on they're funner to play with in my opinion and uh, so I would stick with rear wheel drive vehicles so kind of over here trying to think and my brain is melting in my head so I think I'm about ready just to let y'all go and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video if you did like share subscribe do all that fun stuff. If you have any more uh, advice or comments to make on this, uh, leave them down below. A lot of guys like to read the comments and you get a lot of help in YouTube comments, a lot of good information just from people that know what they're doing and knowing what they're talking about. And there's also a lot of trolls down there trolling people and trying to act like they know what they're doing when they don't even own the tools, you know? So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and take care. Y'all have a great day.